On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we try to fix that pesky airbag light on my 2011 Camaro with the V6. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jericho, and today, like I said, we are here with my 2011 Chevy Camaro V6. This is an RS package car, so it's got a lot of the cool factory options, and we just added the gauge pods that go in the center that the SSs are typically equipped with, and uh, of course, you guys saw the new exhaust is on there. I love the way it sounds, but we cleared all the check engine lights after we did the timing chains and uh, the BG Dynamic. Now, we have one more light on the dash, and it's that SRS light, so I'll show that to you right now. You guys know the pesky light I am talking about, and uh, not only do you get the airbag light, you get this giant service airbag message that's always there until you push the uh, enter button right there in the turn signal stock. So I went ahead and hooked up the auto. We've got the Max SS Elite here. And as you can see, the code that we need to troubleshoot is inflatable restraint sensing and diagnostic module. We've got one fault there. Let's see what she says. Trouble codes. I'm pretty sure it's the passenger seat. Passenger presence module malfunction. And that is B0081, that's the code we're running into there. And if we scroll down on the list on the Autel a little bit more, there's a passenger presence module that I can actually dig into. It says passenger presence sensor inside that, and that one is B0074. So there are some TSBs on this from GM. Before we get too far into that, I wanna look at the live data here. Let's see if we can fire this guy up. Is it reporting a DTC? The answer is yes. Unknown occupancy status. So my thought is maybe it's corrosion on the uh, wiring harness that goes from the car itself into the passenger seat over there. I know there's, you can't see anything because it's super dark with a full black interior, but passenger seat, uh, let's go sit in it and see if we can get anything out of this. All right, we're hopping in here and I am sitting in the seat and no change. So hopefully it's not a bad grid in the seat because I don't have a part for that. But the Autel does give me one cool trick here, which is the passenger presence sensor learn. So turn ignition on, engine off, battery voltage. Oh, okay, so take everything out of the seat. Let me get out of the seat. As you can see, I'm not in the seat. And I'm gonna hit continue and uh, malfunctions present uh, or enable conditions not met. Malfunctions present is better than nothing, I guess. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the key off. I'm gonna move this seat as far forward as I can and uh, pull the wiring harness apart, see what we're gonna run into there. Uh, I think the harness itself is kind of hard to access. Let's see, we'll run the seat all the way forward and uh, then I'm gonna grab some light and try to reach all the way up underneath here. So looking from the passenger side floorboard back, this is the passenger presence module right there, that little guy, and that ribbon coming out of the end right there is what actually goes to the uh, mat that's in the seat. So pop that guy back, push backwards a little bit. Don't rip the ribbon, so be kind of careful there. There you go. A couple wiggles and it came loose. And see if there's any corrosion in there. The GM stuff says don't replace this. So I'm just going to go ahead. I know you guys can't see anything, but plug it back in. And then unplug it and plug it back in like 10 times. There's another connector here. That one's actually the passenger presence module into the seat harness that sits down below there. Uh, clearly the seat's got power, so I don't think there's any real issue with that connector, but there might be with this one. Unplugged all the connectors multiple times, plugged them back in. Let's see what happens this time. It said that we had three codes when it like quickly popped up there a second ago. Now we have passenger presence sensor open and passenger presence module high input. And those are, let's go ahead and clear them. Clear all codes. I know you guys can't exactly read the screen right now, but it says it's erasing. Reading codes. Passenger presence sensor and passenger presence module high input. So I've just about got the Camaro completely fixed. The lights are all off the dash and everything like that. There's just one last thing I'm gonna do with you guys in just a second, and it's to finish up these airbags. I'm gonna show you what went wrong and how we fixed it first though. A friend of mine, my buddy Scott, uh, he's owned a Viper Truck 2, uh, a fifth gen Camaro, and he's building an RST Silverado right now. He's had another one of those too. Really cool. I hit him up and I, he's a service advisor at a uh, Chevy dealership. And I was like, here's those two TSBs. Here's all those lawsuits about this problem. I need a service department that can do the software update on the car and fix the problem. He's like, 
it's not, it's totally the sensor. And I was like, come on. So he said, I've got a set of SS leather seats. You can have them for 400 bucks. And I was like, fine, let's do it. Well, as you can see, I still have cloth seats. I don't have SS leather seats because he'd already taken out the passenger presence module and the sensor. So we looked at mine, it's right here. Obviously, you know, shield your eyes from the hype wing, the internet's most hated motorcycle and my absolute favorite. Um, so this sits under the seat. I'm gonna show you guys how this works in just a second. But what happens is there's a metal rail at the front of the seat. This is the worst, most terrible design ever. Thank you GM for doing something really, really bad. The new ones actually use liquid to measure the weight in the seat uh, on like a hose and a pressure sensor. It's way better than this trash. I mean, this is so bad. Anyway, there's some seat padding. There's these plastic clips, right? And if uh, a bunch of people like slam down in your seats or if they uh, are maybe a little too heavy for the seat, the plastic here rips through the traces on the mat. And as you can see right there, the trace is ripped. Two of them actually. Two traces are ripped through on that uh, weight mat there. And all that does is measure if somebody's in the seat or not. Anyway, uh, first things first, we swapped out the sensor mat and we plugged it back into my passenger presence module and it didn't work. So uh, he had another passenger presence module too. These were all out of the seats already. He just brought them over because I said I would take the seats and he was like, wait, it's already out of the seats. And he just brought this instead. So we plugged in his passenger presence module, boom, airbag light gone. Didn't have to reset it or anything. If the airbag system's working, it cleared the light immediately. So all the lights are off the dash and I'm gonna show you how to change this. Um, the other guides out there say so you have to like take apart the seat, take the side covers off of it and all kinds of fun stuff. They say to like disassemble all of that, which is nonsense. Literally all you have to do is reach under here, there's a plastic tab and take that plastic tab off and that's it. And then right there, you can see the mat. Uh, there's the two clips and there's a little ribbon cable that goes down. All you do is pop those two clips, unhook the ribbon cable from the passenger presence module and it slides out. There's nothing in the back, nothing holding it down. It just slides out. But even though it's fixed, it's not completely done. The passenger presence module bolts onto the bottom of the seat with two bolts. I don't want to take the seat out. It's really not that hard to do this. I'm just going to get in there with like a quarter inch ratchet and uh, I'm not sure what the fasteners are yet, but we're going to unbolt the factory PPM and we're going to actually install the other one. It's just hanging down there. We just plugged the harness into it. Took a couple seconds. This whole fix literally took seconds once we had the parts. With the Milwaukee lightsaber down in the uh, footwell there, you can see like the best anyone's ever been able to see in my videos. There's the passenger presence module right there. That's the factory one. This is the new one. It's actually two Phillips screws. So we're gonna take out that screw. There's one more right there. Can't really even see it. And I'm gonna pop both of those off. And that's, that's literally all that's left. This is all good to go. Just swap it in there and then it's done. So I'm gonna go get a stubby actually. I think I can just grab a stubby Phillips and have that knocked out. Just so you know what you're getting into, these screws are very tight. You might wanna use a, like a, Phillips on a ratchet, but I just went ahead and used the stubby and pushed up as hard as I could. There's the old PPM. That one is toast. You can see the GM part number on there, maybe, probably not. And under the seat, there we go. It is installed and the seat is completely back together. There's the front of the seat. You fold it back over itself twice and then push up to lock all the cloth back together. But yeah, that's the culprits right there, that GM PPM and the passenger presence mat itself there. And this car is completely wrapped up. Minus uh, maybe tuning it. Maybe that's next. Maybe one more thing, one more. I, I do love driving this thing around. I'm having way too much fun. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shopwatchjrgo.com where you can get cool shirts like this. And please, oh, you know what? Since, since I'm wearing the R8 shirt, the R8's done. There's a lot of comments about it. It's been done for so long. We drove it onto the trailer. We drug it down to Florida. I said, keep it as long as you want. I don't ever need it back because there's no room in my garage. I'd love to, but now, now I want it back. It's been so long. Uh, it's on the dyno, I guess, and they've been tuning it and I told them to drive it, put a ton of miles on it because I need to drive it from Florida back to Kansas and I need it to be bulletproof, but I, I want it back. It's been a long, it's been multiple months at this point. I'm ready for the R8. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over. I, I said all that. Please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time. I'm going to see something funny. First of all, there's no lights on the dash on this thing, which makes me incredibly happy. And we'll turn the air off real quick. I guess I'd have to start it to actually clear 
every light, but obviously no airbag light. And the check engine light, of course, clears as soon as it starts. And everybody was like, there's an LED out in the gauges. So I just want to show you guys, there's no LEDs out in those things. I didn't, I didn't do anything. They work fine. It's just weird. So uh, yeah, it works perfectly. The only thing that is kind of weird, I think the LS gets less oil pressure or something like that. Like this thing makes a ton of oil pressure for the dual overhead cam. And whenever you floor it, it's got like well over 70, which is true. The code reader confirms that the odd tell tells me there is way more than 70 PSI in this thing most of the time. So I think that's, it just sits up there like 75 PSI. Uh, anytime it comes back down to idle, it's around like, you know, 35, 40, somewhere in there. But yeah, the uh, gauge cluster works great, even though I think it was designed for the LS.